I'm talking about the lily of the valley, the bright morning star. I'm talking about the one that can do anything but fail. I'm talking about the God that can't lie, can't die. I'm talking about the God that's sitting high, looking low, who's made the earth is put through. Lord Jesus, God is good. God is good. God is good. And I'm not talking about sometime he good. I'm talking about a God that is good all the time. So I don't know what you might be going through. I don't know what you might have woke up to this morning, but I'm here to tell you God is still in place. He made a promise that he would never leave you nor forsake you. I'm talking about the God of more than enough. I'm talking about the one that, Lord Jesus, I just feel good this morning. And I can only hope that if you're going through, I hope some of this good stuff that's on me can rub off, rub off on you. I hope the Lord can pick you up, turn you around, and place your feet on solid ground. I'm here to tell you, I want to put you, Lord, you got to put on the wings of an eagle. You can run and not get weary. You can walk and not faint. Oh, my God, my God. See, it's something about the scriptures that can turn your life around. It'll give you a different perspective, you know, because Lord knows there's going to be seasons in our lives, Lord Jesus, when all of us are going to go through some stuff, some stuff that is designed to break a good man, good woman down. But because of who you are, I'm be because of who God is, I should say, and I can say because of who you are, I mean, because you are that special to God. Are you hearing me? You are that special to God. And, 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 and what makes you special is the mere fact that you made a decision and a choice one day to accept him, making him savior and making him Lord. Truly, he is the lily of the valley in the bright and morning star. I can just preach myself happy. Thank you, Jesus. And that's what is so beautiful. Beautiful. I mean, there's not a time that you can come before God. And I can see why Moses came down off that mountain and he was a glow. And I mean, folk couldn't even look him in the face because he was so, he was so bright and shiny. And that's what God want to do for you today. Oh, Lord Jesus, he want to brighten up your life. He want to turn something around. He want to pick somebody up. He want to heal somebody. He want to deliver somebody. He want to be a way maker for somebody. Oh, my God, my God, it's yours. You can receive it if you can believe it. Thank you, Jesus. My God, my God, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Ooh. And you don't just want to serve him on a Sunday. Mm, mm, mm. I didn't even get into my message yet. I just, I just, I got the talkies. I feel good. I feel good. That's the God that I'm talking about. And he wants to rest, rule, and abide in each and every one of us. Oh, he wants you to know his joy. He wants you to know his love. He wants you to know his peace. Oh, Lord Jesus. He, oh, my God, you got to grab hold to this now. You got to grab hold to this, grab hold to his unchanging hands and, and realize that all things are truly working together for the good. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Dear God, dear Father, once again, Lord God, we just want to say thank you. We want to thank you for the leading of your spirit. We want to thank you for your amazing grace. I want to thank you for your love, Lord God, the love that you are showering and imparting to this line on this morning. And Father God, it is our desire, Father God, to be, to be full today, Lord God. We come an empty cup before a full fountain. And we're asking you, Lord God, to pour whatever is needed into each and every one of us. Oh God, I pray that you would lift every, every troubled spirit, every, 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 every heart that might be somewhat confused. I, I pray for your healing. I pray, Father God, for your anointing, Father God, to pull down strongholds. And Lord God, I pray, Father, that you would heal relationships. I pray, Father God, that you will just have your way today in all of our lives. Bless every family that is represented on this line. Bless our spouses. Bless our children, Father God. Bless our children in our homes, bless our children who are out 
on their own now, Father God. Let them remember, Lord God, her. Woo, that foundation, Lord God, mm, that they received her growing up in your home, in our homes. And Father God, we just want to thank you, Father God. And I'm here to tell you today, my God, my God, I'm here to tell you today that you have to run to win. That's my theme for today now. You are called to run in this life. Are you hearing? I'm talking about the race you are called to run in this life. You have to run to win. You have to run to win. You have to be all in. You, 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 got to, you, you, you just can't sit on the sidelines. Like I said, and like I say from time to time, God didn't save you for you to be a spectator. He saved you so you can participate, my God, in the building of the kingdom, so you can be a blessing to someone other than yourself, so that you can, you know, build, create, do, because you are made in his image after his likeness. See, and the race is not meant for you to be swift. See, it's not for you to think you got to be all over the place, everywhere at all times. No, that's not for you to do. Uh-uh. Even Jesus had 12 disciples. Why? Because as a man, he wasn't able to be everywhere at the same time. So he called 12 disciples, brought them to himself to be his disciples and to do what? And to spread this gospel, which is the good news. So it is not meant for you to be swift. But the race is meant for you to endure to the end. My brother, my sister, you have to be willing to go the whole distance. You got to be willing to, to run to the end. And I'm talking about, I'm talking about this race, Lord Jesus. See, life is not a sprint. Life is not a sprint. It's not meant to be a sprint. It's a marathon. See, and so many of us, we're just sitting in our today, and uh, I should say sitting in our yesterday, not realizing that today is offering new opportunities, new blessings. God want to do something that can change, something that can benefit, something that can open up the windows of heaven and shower you. Lord Jesus, life is a marathon. And you're going to have to be ready to run, Lord Jesus. You're going to have to be equipped to run. Let me not get ahead of myself. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, starting at the 24th verse. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but only one receives the prize? So run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown. But we do it, you do it, for an imperishable crown. Therefore, I run thus, not with uncertainty, like I don't know where I'm going, don't know what I'm called to do, uh-uh. Thus, I fight, not as one who beats the air, uh-uh, mm -mm. wasting strength and breath and, 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 and ooh, Lord, ooh, gifts. Oh, no. But the 27th verse says this, but I discipline my body. Lord, you got to discipline your body and you bring it into subjection, Lord Jesus. Bring it into subjection to the spirit. Bring it into subjection to God. Matter of fact, the Bible says in James, uh, submit to God, resist the devil. You know, so many of us are trying to fight the devil, but we haven't fully submitted to God. Submit to God, resist the devil, and then he will flee. And look at what Jay, and, 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 and look at now, now, now you got to look at what, you got to look at what Paul says here now. Least when you have preached to others that you yourself should not be a castaway or become a castaway. And New King James says disqualified. You don't want to be disqualified. Here you preaching to everybody, but here you're falling short. Why? Because the, the, the mere fact that you're not running your race, running your race, running your life in a way where you can where you can win. You know, and you know, and, and you know myself, I've run two marathons. I thank God for that. And I mean I had that experience. You know, and if you have or had thoughts of ever running a marathon, you are going to have to condition yourself. Are you hearing me? Now, I wasn't looking to win. I wasn't looking to be the first 
person to come in. I just wanted to challenge myself to come in. Thank you, Jesus. I wanted to be able to run that 26 miles, and I did it. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, you see, see, you you will have to, and what you're going to have to do now is properly prepare yourself, both physically and mentally, if you hope to run and finish a marathon or finish that race. Are you hearing me? See, and, and, it's, and understand now, it starts off with those little races, those 5Ks and 10Ks or whatever, so on and so forth, and you build yourself up, you know, because you don't just come out of the, 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 the blocks just, just running a, a marathon 26 miles and think, you know, mm -hmm, it's going to be a piece of cake. No, it's going gonna, it's gonna to challenge you physically and mentally, physically and mentally. See, and the Apostle Paul is using a metaphor and that of an athlete running a race to convey an important spiritual truth. See, what Paul is doing is comparing the Christian life to that of an athlete. See, and, and saints, all of us are called to be runners. I'm, I'm here to tell you now. Now, I, I know based upon, you know, the fact that some of us may have abused ourselves, you know, with the substances, may have abused ourselves at the table, and we might be somewhat overweight. We might be, you know, dealing with some issues unforeseen issues, some things that we didn't call for or ask for to happen, but all of us is dealing with something. But in spite of what we're dealing with, no, you are called to be a runner. Thank you, Jesus. And as I said in my opening, you have to uh, prepare yourself to run this race to the end. See, and the Christian life is where a believer is called to run in such a way that they are able to receive what? The ultimate prize. What's that? That salvation, man. I'm talking about eternal life with Christ or with God. Are you hearing me? I, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna see him face to face. Uh, I've been, I'm down here praising him. I'm worshiping him. I've been shedding tears for him because he's been so good to me. I mean, uh, not just good to me. He's been good to my family. I mean, he's, he has made ways out of no way. Uh, I mean, he has picked me up when I was down. He's, when, when all else has failed, he showed up right on time. When others said they were going to be there for me, and I'm still looking for him today. But I'm here to tell you, my God is forever faithful ever-present help in the time of trouble, and Lord knows, my God, my God, uh, he is a promise keeper. See, in this particular text, encourages the believer to live their life with purpose. See, you have to be able to understand you are here on purpose to fulfill a purpose. You have to dedicate your life to God and to faithfully persevere in your journey while here. Lord Jesus, life is a journey. Lord Jesus. A journey, my God, you know, you woke up this morning, you don't know what the rest of this day going to bring. You don't know, but the real deal is, I know I'm not by myself, and I'm thanking God for that. Lord Jesus, uh, someone, someone who have run a marathon knows what it will take to successfully complete that run. Are you hearing me? I know what it takes. I knew what it took after I ran that first one, but after I ran that second one, that was just as difficult because it was done years later. And I was a little bit older. The older you get, the harder to run. But I'm here to tell you, you can make it. And my God, some of you might be up there in age, but hold on. Keep on running. Keep on doing what you need to do. Matter of fact, you know, I, I remember when my wife was going through when she had a, 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 a hip replacement. And she said motion. She said they told her in therapy that motion is lotion. See, and what we need to do is keep moving our bodies. You need to keep moving your body because motion is lotion. Some of us have become couch potatoes. Some of us don't want to get out of bed. Some of us don't realize, my God, how we have been a hindrance to ourselves. Many of us are not paying attention to what we're digesting. I'm talking about not just the information. But I'm talking about when it comes to food and how we're eating. If you want to run a marathon, you're going to have to eat properly. You're not going to be able to make it on popcorn, peanuts, and Cracker Jacks. You're not going to be able to make it with ice cream and cake. Are you hearing me? You're going to have to have a healthy diet. You're going to have to exercise. You're going to have to do those things that you need to do. I'm talking about what? Training. You're going to have to train. You're going to have to make some sacrifices. Oh, man, some sacrifices. 
Oh boy, you're gonna have to have a mindset that's needed to break through. You know what? That 18 mile invisible wall. Anytime you run a marathon, I want you to know there's an 18 mile invisible wall you're gonna have to press through. You're gonna have to get through. Why? Because that wall is there to stop every runner who is not fully committed and properly trained to endure the race to the end. Lord Jesus. Saints, you got to be, you got to be in it to win it. Are you hearing me? And you have to run to win. You have to run to, to win. And Paul is emphasizing the importance of intentionally running the Christian life, the Christian race, I should say, with purpose, with wisdom, and with understanding. Thank you, Jesus. You see, because a true believer will not be engaging in worldly conversations, mm -mm. not going to be complaining, talking about what they can't do when, when Paul reminds us that we can do, you can do all things through Christ. A, a, a true believer is not going to be pursuing or taking part in activities that will not produce the fruit of righteousness. Thank you, Jesus. Are you hearing me? That, that, that fruit that's going to benefit you in reference to bringing you to that place where you can fulfill the call, my God, my God, that is on your life. So many of us have wasted so much time doing empty, meaningless things, things that wasn't going to benefit us. But today, thank you, Jesus, sir, uh, God is reminding me that I still have time to get it right. See, and a true believer should be focused on pursuing God's will and purpose for their lives. That's what you should be doing, pursuing God's will and purpose for your life. If you don't know, understand your purpose, have a little talk with Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. So what is Paul highlighting? See, Paul is highlighting the importance of self-discipline. Man, you got to put this your flesh in check. I'm going to say it again. You have to be able to put your flesh in check. You have to be able to mortify the flesh daily. Thank you, Jesus. And, and when you do that, then you can demonstrate that next thing is he's highlighting his self-control. Thank you, Jesus. Self-control. See, somebody might say something to you that might be out of character. You're not going to lose self-control. You're going to start praying for them. Thank you, Jesus. Because I realize hurting people hurt people, and they're usually hurting the ones that they should be loving. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing how you can be so, so nice to people? You can be so loving, so kind to people. And the very people that you're embracing and showering that love on is the very people that will abuse you, take advantage of you, take your kindness for weakness, and not realize that, you know, you have been placed in their life to be a blessing. So, so, so as a believer, you should be exercising self-discipline. Are you hearing me over those over those uh, uh, fleshly desires, uh, you know, not wanting to hinder your spiritual growth and development. Are you hearing me? You have to be able to exercise some self-discipline. And you don't want to make the mistake of disqualifying yourself and falling short of receiving the ultimate prize of eternal life. Lord Jesus, I want to see my Jesus. Man, I want, I want to be like Mephibosheth. I want to, ooh, are you hearing me? I want to sit with my soon coming king. Lord Jesus. Uh, see, and, and when you're sitting at the table, I don't care if you're fat, tall, short, or tall. I, you, I, when we're sitting at the table, we all at the same side. We all the same size. Thank you, Jesus. Man, oh man, oh man. See, and God is, you know, you know in, in the natural, you have to be mindful of, as I said earlier, your diet. You also have to get plenty of rest and you have to do your best to live wise. You have to live wise, man. You know, God has called us to be wise master builders. You know, you're building a life for yourself. And those of you who are parents, you're helping to lay a foundation for your children to live a, to build a healthy life for themselves. You know, all of us should want our child to, to do better than us. I want my child to blow up. I want my child to do more than I've done and to experience more than I will ever experience. And I want my child, are you hearing me? That's a godly parent. I'm going to pour into my child and I'm going to do everything that I can do to, to be a role model and an example 
that's going to lift up the kingdom, that's going to lift up this man named Jesus. I want to adopt a holistic lifestyle. Oh, Jesus. See, see, I don't just want to be wise and healthy. I want to adopt a, an holistic lifestyle. See, and you have to be able to be clear in your mind. You have to be able to clear, I should say, your mind of all negativity. You got to clear your mind of all negativity. You know, on your, on your computer, there's a button that says delete. You got to be able to delete some of that negativity. Now, matter of fact, all of that negativity, not some. Because whatever you allow to stay is going to morph into something bigger. And eventually it will take over if you give it place. You can't afford to give it place or space. Uh-uh. You got to create an atmosphere and an environment that's conducive to the Holy Spirit, conducive to, to, to Jesus and to God. My God. See, I, 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 I just want to be in his presence because the Bible tells me in his presence is fullness of joy. So you're really going to have to prepare yourself mentally and visually. Visually. Why do I say visually? You have to be able to see yourself running that 26 miles. You know, especially if you're given the, the outline of the, of, the, of the course that you're going to run. You know, you have to be able to visually see that thing there. See it in your mind, you know, because that's going to help you to, 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 to stick to the plan and, you know, and so on and so forth. You want to be able to not just mentally, but visually prepare yourself to run that 26 miles. And you have to mentally and visually prepare yourself. What's the vision that God has given you for your life? What gifts, talents, skills, and abilities have God imparted and blessed you with? And can you see yourself operating in the call that is on your life? I feel real good right now. Thank you, Jesus. You know, you know when, you, when we start out, our resume might not have on it, you know, <laughs> you know, I, I didn't see pastor. I didn't see preacher. I didn't see teacher. I, I didn't see many of the things that I'm doing today, you know, but the real deal is God's got a plan. Are you hearing me today? God's got a plan for your life and that plan that he has for your life. It will far out distance anything that you might want to do on your own. So, Father God, like David said in Psalm 51, create me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Thank you, Jesus. Man, you have to be able to run with the end in mind. I, I, let me say it again. You have to be able to run your race with the end in mind because this is not your home. Don't think you're going to be here indefinitely. And some of us are living our life like we're going to be here and like we're not going to die. Hey, you were born to die. Are you hearing me? This is not your home. Matter of fact, the Bible says, what do a prophet, a man, a woman to gain the whole world and lose your soul? You can gain all of the riches and all of the wealth, all of everything that this world has to offer. But you've never seen a U-Haul going behind a hearse. You're not taking nothing with you when you leave here. Matter of fact, Job says, I came onto the planet empty with nothing, and I'm sure I'm going to leave here with nothing, taking nothing. So you're never going to see a U-Haul. And look at what we're trying to hold on to. Look at what's keeping us up at night. My God, my God. Got us crying and going through changes. Why? Because this, this, I just got to have this. I just got to. No, 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 no. What you got to have is Jesus. You've got to have Jesus. Uh, just give me a little bit more of Jesus. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, see, and a lot of people is going to start that race with you. But let me tell you this. Everybody will not cross the finish line with you if they finish the race at all. A lot of people that might have started out with you mm, mm -mm, whew, will not cross that finish line with you. You know, they might not have trained like you. They might not have been as, commitment, as committed or as disciplined as you, or whatever the case may be. And then some might not finish the race at all. You know, whew, Lord Jesus. So, you know, and, and, and we know for sure now, Christ is coming back. When he comes back, he's coming back for the church first. So you want to be ready. See, see and, 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 and this is what, you know, you're running for in the spirit. 
see, you got to understand now, this race is going to take place in the spirit. See, see, this, this race is going to take place in the spirit, but it's going to transcend into our natural lives, into the world, into this world that we all share. Look at 1 Peter 1 and 4. Check this out. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away. We're talking, oh, Lord Jesus. Uh, my God, that prize, Lord Jesus. Reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation. See, you're being kept by the power of God. Not yourself, not your money, not your honey. It's the power of God that is keeping you. Oh, are you hearing me? See, and, 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 and ready to be revealed in the last time. In this, you greatly rejoice. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. Are you hearing me? Though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, Lord, some of you are being tested. Some of you are being tried. Some of you are going through, and God knows mm, 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 that the genuineness, the seventh verse says, that the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire. See, your faith going to be tested by fire and may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. That's it now. See, and you have to realize now. See, 1 Peter is, 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 is highlighting four themes. Four themes. Number one, faith. Faith. The second thing is endurance. The third thing, hope. My God. And then the ultimate reward or prize, that is awaiting every believer is heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Eternal life you know, with Christ Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. See, and all of us, uh, those of you who are here viewing this, those of you who are on the prayer line this morning, you are encouraged to remain steadfast in the faith. You have to remain steadfast in the faith, faith, even in the face of your trials, your tests, your difficulties, your sicknesses, the different things that are in place to try to break a good man, a good woman down. Because one thing we know for sure, the enemy will come into your life uninvited. That sickness that you have, you didn't invite that. You didn't want that to happen. That stuff you're going through, you didn't, mm -mm, that broke, mm -mm, you didn't look for, I don't, I, it's not like I want a broken heart. Mm -mm, mm -mm. But it's the trying of your faith that will produce patience. Ooh. See, and, and hopefully it will ultimately lead to you bringing praise, honor, and glory to God. It has not yet appeared what you shall be. Thank you, Jesus. But live your life. Run to win. Bring praise, honor, and glory to God. You know, there's a saying in the church, when the praises go up, the blessings come down. And I'm telling you, boy, when you're going through that's not a time to complain. That's a time to lift up the name of Jesus. Uh, that's the time to thank him for all of what he's done. Thank him for what he's doing. Thank him for the mere fact that I know he's still working on some things that I might not be able to see. I'm learning to trust in him with all of my heart and lean not into my own understanding. Look at Ecclesiastes 9 and 10. Ecclesiastes 9 and 10 says, whatever your hands find to do. Do it with all your, all your might. For there is no work or device or knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you are going. As I said, this is not your home. So this right here, Ecclesiastes, Solomon is telling us now, there's no work. There's no, no, no iPad, no telephone. There's no wisdom. There's no knowledge in the grave where all of us are going. And then Solomon said in the 11th verse, I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift. Lord Jesus, the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor bread to the wise, nor riches to men of understanding, nor favor to men of skill, but time and chance happen to us all. Time ooh, is a commodity. You can't get back. You can't change. 
time. Mm, we're so busy chasing after this, chasing after that, but not realizing that time marches on. Pay attention to the time, how you're spending your time. You don't want to spend your time like you may have spent your money. And many of us have spent, recklessly spent our money. Given no forethought, no plan. Oh, Lord, especially if we was out there in that world living that promiscuous life and just, you know, you know what I'm talking about. I'm going to leave that alone. But you understand what I'm saying. See, but the real deal is you want to spend your time wisely. That means live your life. You want to run to win. You know, because I realize that chance, experiences, consequences, circumstances is going to happen to us all. But 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 look at this here in the 12th verse. For man also does not know his time. Man also does not know his time. Like fish taken in a cruel net. Like birds caught in a snare. So the sons of men a snared in an evil time when it falls suddenly upon them. And all of us are going to be caught up in some stuff. You know, and like fish are caught up. See, Solomon is sharing a reflection on the uncertainty, on the uncertainty in the unpredictability of life. He's in emphasizing the importance of being diligent. You have to be diligent. You have to be wise. And look here, you're going to have to be humble. Humble yourself before God. Are you hearing me? Humble yourself in the face of life challenges, these adversities. So number one, you're going to have to be diligent. You're going to have to put forth some effort. Are you hearing me? You are encouraged to work diligently and wholeheartedly, you know, and, and, and all of your doing. You want to do it with all of your heart, you know, my God. And whatsoever you were called to do, do it willingly and from your heart. Are you hearing me today? Because you might not get another chance to get it right. So you have to make the most of what you have today. Make the most of what you have right now. Ooh, whatever you're called to do, do it with your whole heart. Realizing that all life will inevitably end in death to your body, but not to your soul. So I want to emphasize that now. This body's going to die, going to go into the ground, but your soul is going to go back to your maker. That's if you've accepted Jesus Christ, making him your savior and making him your Lord. Very important, very important. I always want to emphasize that because that's really what this is about, leading others to Christ. The second thing is humility and recognizing the uncertain, the uncertainties of life, uncertainties, these things that show up unannounced and uninvited, as I said earlier. See, the reality of life is filled with uncertainties and, and, and some you're going to be able to avoid and some things uh, you're not going to be able to avoid. And these things you're either going to embrace or, you know, you're going to have to let it go. You know, you got to be able to see you know, that there's a season in all of our lives that's going to give birth to things that are good, things that are bad, and you're going to have to know what to embrace, and you're going to have to know what to let go of. Realizing that the outcomes of your life will not always be determined or achieved by your strength. The Bible says it's not by might nor by power, but it's by God's spirit. Thank God for his Holy Spirit. Romans 8, 14, you must be led by the Holy Spirit. We are, those of us who are sons and daughters of God are led by the Spirit. So it's not by strength. Because matter of fact, the Bible goes on to say that when you are weak, he will make you strong. So what you're trying to accomplish, what you're trying to achieve and do, is not going to be done by your strength. It's not going to be achieved by your wisdom, your knowledge, or your, your, your intelligence. Let me put it like that. Why? Because life is a series of unexpected events, a series of unexpected events. And those unexpected events are shaping you. Are you hearing me? Those unexpected events are shaping you. Is either building you up, mm, mm -mm, making you stronger, or is breaking you down, causing you to doubt, causing you to be fear, fearful, and so on and so forth. 
placing you in a state of double-mindedness. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So that's your first agenda is to please God. I want to please God. Thank you, Jesus. See, so you have to be humble. You have to be humble. See, God, hey, hey, the Bible says pride always come before fall. So you have to be able to be humble. You know, when I look at what is taking place in our government, when I look at what is taking place in our, in our, in our, you know, just taking place around all of us, we can look and see those who are prideful, how they're falling because of some of the things they have said and because of the, some of the things that they are doing thinking that they're able to achieve, thinking that they're able to do these things in and of themselves under their own strength, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. You have to be humble while acknowledging at the same time your own limitations. Man, you have to acknowledge your own limitations. See, I'm not going to try to sing like certain people sing because, you know, hey, that's not what I'm called to do. See, I, I can't fix computers. I, you know, I, I can't tear apart a telephone and put it back together again. I, I can't, you know, I can do some limited stuff, a little bit of stuff on a car. You know, I can check some certain things, change some oil and do some stuff, change a flat. I can fix a flat. I can do some certain, but when it comes to getting into some transmissions and all this other stuff, heavy motor stuff, I can't do that. I have to take it to someone that does that, someone who has mastered the art of working on cars, someone who has mastered the art of working on computers, someone who has mastered the art of working on whatever. You have to stay in your lane. See, and you have, oh Lord, are you hearing me today? And you ain't. Hey, it's a terrible thing to come to the planet. There's a terrible thing to be given this life and not know what you were sent here to do, not to be able to operate in your gift. The wealthiest place on the planet is not the stock market on Wall Street, not the diamond mines in South Africa or the oil wells in Kuwait or, or Saudi Arabia. Uh-uh. The richest place on the planet is your neighborhood cemetery. And I say that, why? Because there are songs that haven't been wrong sung, excuse me, or books that haven't been written, movies that haven't been produced by men and women, businesses that haven't been started by men and women, just like you and me, who have put off for tomorrow what they should be doing today. There's so much more in you, my sister. There is so much more in you, my brother. Don't limit yourself. Yes, all of us are limited in reference to some of the things, but once you know and understand your purpose, do all that you can do, my God, to sharpen your skills, to sharpen, to, to develop, to, to build yourself up, create, my God, you're here to be a wise master builder. You have to use your God-given gifts, your talent, skills, and abilities. Because these gifts, talents, and abilities, skills, and abilities will define you. Are you hearing me? It will define you. That third thing is an awareness. You have to have an awareness of your mortality. Because you have, all of us have been limited, have been given a limited amount of time to do what we were sent here to do. All of us have been given a limited amount of time to do what we were sent here to do. Are you hearing me? And it's up to you to make the most out of whatever time you have left. Are you hearing me? And when I say that now, utilizing the gifts and the resources that you have. Are you hearing me? Why? Because all of us should want to get the job done. I, I just got to get this thing right. I got to do it now. Whether it's raising a family, whether it's a uh, starting a ministry and, and 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 with the Lord's help and those that God would add to your fellowship or your ministry to help you grow that church, to help you grow that ministry and to become all of what God have, you know, called it to be. Thank you, Jesus. And then understand this, I, this, this, this final thing is this, the unpredictability of life. The unpredictability of life. Like I said, there's no certainty in life. You don't even know what today, the rest of today holds. So Solomon is comparing the human experience to that of a fish being caught in a net or birds that are snared in a trap. See, see, you don't know what will happen when you leave your home. 
You don't know what's going to happen when you go out into the world. Matter of fact, you don't even know what's going to happen even when you get up out your bed in the morning. You know, you can have a fall in your in your bathtub. You you can you can you can sit at your table eating and and you can choke on a chicken bone or whatever. Are you hearing me? You don't know what this day holds. But as I said, you do know who holds this day. And I really do believe that Solomon is 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 is, is sharing a warning and a, and a reminder that unforeseen circumstances and situations sometimes at unexpected uh, times will appear, suddenly appear, without warning. It's not like you're going to be, you know, to be forewarned is to be forearmed. I'm prepared. I'm ready for that thing. But these things and these events will sometimes suddenly appear without warning. But what I would say is you have to be prepared to handle it. You have to be prepared to handle whatever comes. And I'm here to tell you today, my sister, I'm here to tell you today, my brother, you are well able to do what God has sent you here to do. But now understand, you are you have to run your race to win. You have to run your race to win. And understand now, the Lord will never give you more than what you can bear. And he will always leave you away of escape. He will always leave you a way of escape. I'm not talking about in a bottle. I'm not talking about going to your medicine cabinet and taking something, mm -mm, Tylenol and this and that and that, and this, mm -mm, Advil, uh-uh. I'm not talking about going to your neighborhood doctor. Mm -mm. I'm, no, 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 no. Your way of escape is in Jesus. Come to Jesus. Recognize and realize that you're given one opportunity, make the most of it, run to win, live your life to win, do all that you can do. I can, I will, I must, I can do this. I will do this. I must do this. Why? Because God, mm, 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 mm. God is calling you saints. If you're viewing this on, on social media, God wants you to know he's calling you. He's calling you to, to get to that place where you recognize and realize you are here to run your life in such a way where you can win. He wants you to know you have all the provision. You have what you need to make it. You were created. Mm, mm, mm. You were created to win. Mm, mm, mm. See, and God has called you for such a time as this. Oh, my God, my God. Much like those on the prayer line, you have been anointed, appointed, elected, and selected by God to run, to win. You might not come in first. You might not come in second. You might not come in third. But the, the, the assignment is to come in. I want to come in. Thank you, Jesus. I want to be able to finish that run. And I want to finish it in such a way where I can bring glory to God. I want to live my life before my soon coming king. I want to live my life before my peers. Mm, there's going to be some folk that's going to talk about you. There's going to be some folk that's going to put you down. There's going to be some times in your life when you're going to even doubt yourself. But I'm here to tell you today, if you run to win, God will do the rest. You can, you will, and you must. Mm, mm, mm. You can, you will, and you must run to win. Praise God. As I said, if you're viewing this on social media, please give me a like if you like that. If you like today's message, please share this message with your family, with friends, with whatever. Put it on your social media site. And you can also subscribe to the channel. And not just subscribe, subscribe to the channel, but you can also hit that notification bell and you'll receive the next upcoming messages that will be put up. You'll be one of the first to receive it. I love you, but no, as much as I might love you, might, and I don't even know you, but one thing I can say about this is the fact that God knows each and every one of us and he knows you and he wants you to know you have been blessed by the best and his name is Jesus. Run your race to win. I love you now and have a great day.
my brothers and sisters out there in YouTube land. God bless you.